having a blast. Not because it's vacation, but I'm having a blast because we're doing and serving the purpose of God Amen. in this nation. Not just here, you guys, you guys serve the purpose of God in this nation. Amen. Amen. So I want to first say, Pastor Steve and Dina have sent us over here. Um, I'm alone, so when I say us, you've seen the rest of them. <laughs> they all um, are at Pastor Glenn's church right now ministering. And Melanie created a flyer, <laughs> and so I ignored it. I ignored the message. What do you mean? What is she signing me up for? <laughs> Which I don't mind, but I'm like, another flyer. <laughs> I never get flyers, so I'm like, I feel so cool. <laughs> you know? Get your picture on something. Anyway, Pastor Stephen Dino from the U.S. Send their love. Yeah. Mm. They say thank you for having us here. Because we receive nothing but love. And... You've challenged us. You've challenged the team to rise up. Amen? Amen? We minister back home, but there's something different about ministry over here. You guys carry the ministry. Amen? Amen. Hey, and Mark, I know you're new, but get ready, right? Wow. Get ready to carry something. Hallelujah. So like um, Pastor Melanie said, I am in Singapore, and... I believe, I know God has, God did move us out there. God moved my husband and I out there for his job, and it's good that we're talking young professionals right now, or people who are in school, or people who are working, um, because God moved us out there for my husband to run Asia. Um, so we moved to Singapore. We are alone. There's no one out there. There's no one in Singapore that we know. And all of our family is in a completely different time zone. So it's hard to connect. Very hard to connect. So we really are alone. And God designed that for us because he wants to change us and call us up even higher. And when Melanie said, I have joy, then amen. I do. I do. I have joy in the hard times. You know why? Because joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So even when it's not so joyful and come when on, you're alone, come on. you still get to have it. Amen. You get to have it in the long suffering that's also part of the fruit of the Spirit. But you also get peace and patience and gentleness and kindness and love. You get all these things when you're a Christian. So that even when you're going through something, you still have joy. Amen. Amen. And so tonight I want to talk to you about identity. Oh. Yes. Mm. What? Who do you identify as? There's so much noise out there to know who you are. In America, I love that Love is live streaming this because I know some of my American friends are going to watch and I'm like, oh, i got to be careful. But in America, there's people who don't even know if, which bathroom we use. In America, boys and girls bathroom. Now, they don't know. So they stripped off male and female pictures because everyone doesn't know if they want to be a boy today or a girl today or maybe they want to be gender fluid, which means they don't even know and they don't want to claim anything. And so people are going through all these crises and it's mostly like, High school, young professional, like your age. Um, they're going through these crises. They're buying books. They're going to see psychologists. They're taking medicine. They have no peace. They don't know who they are because they don't have these people who are going through this. They don't have Jesus. So you guys right now are already ahead of the game. Amen? Amen. You have Jesus. Philippians 1.21, it says, To live is Christ, to Ooh, die is gain. Amen. Amen. We hear two things in this scripture that Paul says. Once when we receive Christ, we get all that he has for us. We get access to the Father through his blood. We have freedom, rule, and reign. So when he says to live in Christ, 
We get all those things. But to die is gain. When you realize that Jesus is the only way, all other things in this world don't matter. You're not, you're not filling your time like the rest of your friends who don't know him. You don't find hobbies. You're not shopping. You're not you know, wasting your time outside, just walking along the streets, just doing nothing. You're not wasting your time. To die is gain. When you die to yourself, you literally gain everything in him. When you die and you receive Christ's identity, you gain everything. Amen. Everything in him. Amen. When Gabe and I live, my husband is Gabe. Gabe and I live a lifestyle where we deny ourselves. Jesus says, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. I don't preach prosperity gospel. I'm not preaching that tonight. But I need you to listen to me. God can do, you're so young. God can do anything with you. Amen. My husband is now a vice president of a company. We're in Asia right now. But he's had the opportunity in America to ring the bell, the opening bell in the stock market, not once, which is already rare in itself, but twice. Wow. He texts me, he goes, oh my goodness, I'm going to fly in a private jet right now. Mind you, I'm at home, I have three young boys. And I'm like, haven't showered in days, and I'm dying, and I'm like, oh, Jesus, get me through this. And he's like, I'm going to fly in a private jet, and we're doing it. I'm like, really? Um, but God has blessed him in a way. Nothing that he's done. God has blessed him in a way because he's denied himself, and in his workplace, he has taken a stance. My husband is an executive in Silicon Valley. In America, that's where all like the tech companies yeah. are. Man. Lots of money in that valley. We don't live in Silicon Valley. We live in Sonoma, where my church is, where Pastor Steve, who was once a missionary in the Philippines, met this family, met the Ramos family, and everything that this family has deposited in Pastor Steve Steve's brought back to America in at Lighthouse Church in Sonoma, and we've picked to stay in Sonoma and be a part of the move of God there and say no to Silicon Valley because that's not where God has us. And it drives the people in Silicon Valley crazy. They can't understand why do you live in Sonoma. So then we get invited to these parties and we go, you know, as a couple, because in Silicon Valley you have to show up, you know, to dinners or whatever. Gabe gets sent on these vacations because God has blessed him to be to have favor in the workplace. And we go and people say, Why are you guys so happy? And we literally say, To the lost. We have Jesus. We love him. And they and then they they're all getting drunk. All of them, we don't drink. And these CEOs and these executives are drinking and they can't, and Gabe, you don't drink. And Gabe's always like, I don't drink, I don't need that, I have Jesus. And he's preaching at these executives in Silicon Valley. We don't, we don't force it. We only preach when they ask. And I have had now developed relationships with the wives of these executives. And they call me or they pull me aside at these parties and they they say, tell me how you do it. Why are you so happy? Tell me how to, help me how to deal with my kids. I say, well, I'll pray for you. This is what God has done in my life. And then we start sharing testimonies. Yeah. I share testimonies about this very church to those people in Silicon Valley. Most of them aren't happy. Right? They don't have Jesus. Well, they're all not happy because they don't have Jesus. They don't know what joy it is. Nice. Uh, but Gabe and I, we relate to everyone in our identity in Christ. And so it stops the lost in their tracks. And in that, God has blessed that because we deny ourselves Amen. and we deny our flesh. And to live is Christ, to die is gain. And in that, God has raised up Gabe, I believe, it's been prophesied over his life, to be a standard in the valley to say, 
this is what Jesus can do. Amen. You guys need Jesus. And it's given us more opportunities to wow. preach wow. to Amen. these people who have millions of dollars and they're not happy. Right? Yeah. So your testimonies, you guys, in the workplace, you need to start sharing your testimony. You need to start speaking and standing on the truth that God has given you. You need to identify Christ, not identify what this world is. Yeah. Amen? You guys need to start realizing your identity in Him. Not just in this church, not I'm a good drummer, not I know how to play the piano. We need that. I'm not saying don't do that. We need that. But when you relate to God and who he is and knowing who you are, it's a different story. Yeah, amen. You don't yield to what people say you are. In 1 Samuel 17, Saul wanted to put on his armor to cover David. The world wants to put all their stuff on you. What it means to be successful or cool or what's in, they want to put that on you tell you how to live and in that place it's not going to work and the armor didn't fit David Saul's armor didn't fit David it didn't fit he went out David went out to face Goliath with what God had prepared for him prior David in the secret place was fighting bears and lions God prepared him in the secret place. What are you guys doing in your secret place? What are you doing in the secret place so that when it's time for God to publicly display you, Amen. and David goes to meet Goliath publicly. He prepares in the secret, and then he goes to meet the giant publicly. What you do in private prepares you for the public, for the public display of God. God is always wanting to approve the man of God on earth. Amen. So what God prepares you in private is going to approve the man of God on earth. So when you identify with Christ, when you know who you are, you start living a life in secret, in a good way, digging wells, finding the manna, looking for what God has. So when it's time to come forth, you know exactly what to do when you're facing Goliath. And then God approves you. And God lets you be successful. And God Amen. lets you be a standard. Amen. God wants to qualify his people. Amen. He wants to show you off. Amen. God wants to publicly display the man of God in the hour of Goliath. And your generation faces so many obstacles. But it's time for those who are in Christ to take action against these Amen. giants. The sons of God are to be revealed. It's time for the sons of God to be revealed. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 8, 19, for the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of sons of God. In this hour that we face right now, the giants in this country are so big. Yeah. You guys have battles that I don't deal with. They're different. They're big. This world is getting crazier. But I see you guys. And I see God qualifying each and every one of you. Yeah. God is ready to display his glory in each and every yeah. one of you. He wants yeah. to reveal this company right here as the sons of God. Yeah. He wants to move you forward in purpose. Amen? Yeah. Who you are in Christ matters. How Jesus sees you and how you see yourself in him matters. Yeah. You guys need to start getting a faith vision of who you are. You need to get a faith vision of who you are in Christ. Again, you're not just the worship leader. You're not just this. Who are you in Him? Every time you feel like you're stuck, you must go back to that faith vision that God has given you. Listen, Paul and Silas were in jail. They were in jail. Their natural circumstance was terrible. It sucked. Sometimes you feel like you're in jail. Sometimes you guys get stuck. Whether it be at work or at school or a family situation or a financial situation, you get stuck. Right. It's designed that way. God designs things. Some of it he, he, he allows to happen. God doesn't let it happen. allows it. Because he wants to reveal the sons of God. He wants to reveal what's in yeah. you. He allows things to happen. So Paul and Silas, they're in jail. Not only are they in jail, it says that they're in the inner prison. Like, there's prison, and then there's inner prison. So they're in the inner prison, 
And then it said that their like ankles are shackled, they're tied, they can't move, they can't get out. And as I was reading this when I was studying, it, I just remember the scripture says how beautiful are the feet of the ones who bring the gospel, the good news. And I'm like, look at what the enemy's doing. It's right. such a picture. He takes their feet, takes their ankles and chains them, and then it's the inner jail. Like, the enemy doesn't want Paul and Silas to be in the inner court in the Holy of Holies. He's like, I'm just going to do the exact opposite of what God's call is on their life. Sometimes we feel like we get in that place. Oh my goodness, where am I? This feels like the exact opposite of what God yeah, says yeah. that I have in the Bible. But the reality is it's designed to be like Paul and Silas. Amen. And what did they do? They knew whose they were. They knew their identity. They said, I don't care where I am right now. Amen. I'm going to worship my Lord. Yeah. I'm going to seek the kingdom of peace. Yeah. And we enter his hands with thanksgiving and great. And they go up the mouth of the Lord inside the shackles yeah. of this jail. And then all of a sudden what happens? The walls break. Yeah. The walls break. There's going to be times in your life where you're in that spot and you're like, who am I? I'm not in the, this circumstance. It doesn't define me. This circumstance doesn't define me. I need to know. I need to know who I am. Oh, I remember. I remember what God spoke to me. I remember the vision. You need to get a vision. Without a vision, the people prayer. Get a vision of who you are in Christ. So when you're in that spot, you can still cry out and say, Thank Amen. You, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And the wall came down. And not only does that happen, because when you know who you are in Christ and you stand in that place, you leave the prisoner, the, the, the jailer, the guy keeping you hostage, to Christ. Right. You lead him to Christ, and then it's not even there. Like, it's like a domino effect, because then you, like, baptize him, and then he's like, uh, can you come to my house? I want you to meet my family, and let's get them saved, too. So in this story, they're stuck. Palm Silas are stuck. They know who they are. They're like, forget this. These walls don't define me. I know where I'm going. And they go up, and God literally takes where they go in the spiritual, make it become in the natural. That, did you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> he takes who they are in the spiritual, Amen. makes it affect the natural, Amen. and then there's fruit from it. Do you want fruit in your life? Yeah. I'm so excited that Mark's here. I'm sorry I keep picking on you, but seriously, Mark is here. Bring your fruit. Live for Jesus. Amen. And watch God bring people in. Amen. Because God is a God that does bless his people. Not prosperity gospel, but he does though. We've all been blessed. Melanie's over here like, Jesus, I need this for the kids hope. I need this. And God's like, okay, here, let me send you these people. Let's bless these people. There are many testimonies in this place. Like love, she just got a promotion. <laughs> right? She gets to run her work. There's testimony after testimony in this place. At Lighthouse, this is the year of testimony. I encourage each and every one of you to start sharing your testimonies. Amen. And encourage one another. Because in Revelation it says, we overcome by the Love. blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. The word. So um, one of your weapons of overcoming the enemy is sharing what yeah. God is doing in your life. Yeah. No matter how big or how small. And not loving your life even unto the death. Are you yeah. ready for that? Amen. But how can I love my life not even unto the death? What does that mean? Um, that means people might kill you. Okay. How do you get to that place in your life where you're ready to put your life on the line for Jesus? Your identity. You need to know whose you are. You need to know whose you are so that when you're in a situation, I'm not saying this is going to happen to any of you, Jesus covered these people. But if, you, if you're in that situation, yeah. and some of you may have already been in that situation, you're like, okay, Lord, for you, I do this. I lay down my life just as you did for me. Mm. Amen? That's how you overcome. So when you know whose you are, and you act like Paul and Silas, when you feel like you're in this prison cell, you just pray. You mm. pray. And you get out of it, and there's some fruit. Amen? Amen. 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 Sorry, I went over it. Okay. We also know that whose you are changes the loss or tough circumstances in your life. You might even be facing a battle right now where the enemy is lying to you about your future, telling you you don't have one. Yeah. Listen, 1 Samuel 30, we see total loss. David. Then it happens when David 
and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the woman and all who were in it, both small and great, without killing anyone, and carried them off and went their way. Oops. When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Everything was gone, you guys. David was battling, comes back, and literally everything and everyone was gone. I thought you were the king, David. Like, what's going on? Aren't you God's choice? That's where I would go. I love Melanie. Do you all feel joy? I'm like always the one, like, what did I do wrong? Okay, Lord, what did I do to deserve this? Actually, I'm more like, who did this to me? <laughs> I'm such an Italian. I'm Italian at heart, so it's everyone else did this, and I didn't do anything. <laughs> like, for a side of no testimony, like, I got a DUI years ago, and it was because Pastor Dina prayed it, like, prayed for me to get one, because it was scary. I don't want to make light of it. It's illegal. I'm not laughing. But she prayed for me to get arrested, and I did. Instead of being like, that was so wrong of me. Wow, I'm like, Dina. <laughs> Pastor Dina, you prayed for this? Like, I'm going to give you my bill. It's very expensive. I'm like, that's not funny. And I think, like, I didn't talk to her for a day, but I'm like, okay. <laughs> no one should be driving drunk. But that was before I was. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but that's me. It's her fault, not mine. Um, anyway, sorry, that was a random tangent. I'm so sorry. But God changed my life around, amen. And I'm here, and I'm telling you today, He changed my life because my identity, I don't look at me and I don't look at the past. You actually, you need to, that's part of your identity shift to live as Christ, to die as game. When you die, you literally. Remove yourself. When you claim the blood of Jesus over your life, when you accept Christ, all of your sins are forgiven, washed away, and you're done. So you have to start walking in your new identity, Jesus, and then get that faith vision. So David, he comes back. He's totally bummed. Everything's gone. Everything's lost. Wives, children, food, livestock, everything. Burning. Everything's burning. David was greatly distressed, right? Because the people, so not only, so the people spoke of stoning him. He, they were mad they were going to kill him, right? Then David said, this is verse 7, Then David said to Abathar the priest, the son of Amalek, Please bring me the ephod. So he brought the ephod to David, and David inquired of the Lord, And he said, shall I pursue <coughs> this band? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord says, basically later down, yeah, I'll give them to you. Prior to David going and seeking the Lord, it says in verse 6, Moreover, David was, I'm sorry, I didn't finish that. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. So David's identity, he comes and he sees. He's in this lonely place. His friends want to kill him, and he's got nothing to show for it. And his life is like in shambles. And it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord. He remembered whose he was. He remembered God had placed him there. He remembered God had called him there. He remembered that he knew the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he strengthened himself in the Lord. Amen. He got his strength in the Lord and said, okay, I know who I am. I'm going to go ask you. I'm going to go seek the Lord now in this way. And God answers him. And then in verse 18 we see, so David recovered all. Amen. David recovered all. God right now is making a company of the overcomer. Amen. 
you guys are going to overcome everything. Yeah. Since we're even going to overcome death, right? You can only do this by knowing who you are, by knowing your identity. You see, David knew who he was. He looked at this place and said, everything is gone now. So Paul and Silas are different. They're stuck in a jail. Now David has like free will and he's walking around. He's not stuck anywhere, but he's lost something so great to him. He's lost his family. He's lost his friends who now want to kill him. He's lost livestock. Everything's burning. He's at this great loss and he says, nope. I know who I am. I'm going to strengthen myself and seek him. And in that, the overcomer will stand in that spot and say, I don't look at my natural circumstance. Both of these stories I, I've shared, I don't look at my natural circumstance because I know who I am. I know Christ and I'm the overcomer. Amen. It says, 1 John 5, 4 through 5, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes in Jesus is the Son of God. It's a question there, but the reality is the statement. Amen. He who overcomes is the one who has the faith that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. When are you going to start walking in that identity? When are you going to start demonstrating the overcomer in the earth? You guys are called to be people who demonstrate the gospel. Amen. In an Acts, they laid hands, the eyes were open, the deaf ears were open. Amen. They added to the church daily. There's miracles, there's signs, there's wonders. You guys are supposed to go into your workplace. You're supposed to be in your school. You're supposed to be doing whatever you do during the day and start demonstrating the gospel. Jesus wants to show off and he wants to do it with you, quite frankly. But he can only do it if you know him. He can only do it when you're doing those things in the secret place like David did with the lions and the bears to get the public display of them. Um, not only am I going to kill Goliath, but I'm going to do it with a stone. Not only am I going to open the blind eyes, I'm just going to lay hands and just say, Jesus. You guys are supposed to demonstrate the gospel like that. Amen. It's not just in these walls. Yeah. God is calling you up higher. You need to seek the Lord in a new way today. Amen. Because you are to be the overcomers in the Philippines. You are to be those who seek Jesus in a way where when you're walking on the street, your, sh your shadow is healing people like Paul. When I go out, when my husband and I go out, we actually get excited to do things like this because we're around people who truly, America, they don't, they're not a Christian nation. There are Christian places and not everyone's really a Christian and everyone's a Christian but doesn't go to church and all this stuff. So when we were together side by side and we're at these events um, with these people, we're like, who can we share Jesus with and how can we do it? And we're looking for it. We don't just like live our lives casually and passively. Ah. It's boring. Yeah. It's boring. Yeah. I shared with these people who have millions of dollars why Jesus turned water into wine. Why she's drinking wine. Do you know why? Do you know why? I'm going to share. Something the Lord showed me. This is another side note. This is a freebie. It's not even in my notes. Unless you don't want it. Do you want it? Okay. Yeah. We're sharing with these people, and it was perfect to share at the time because the, the culture that we were in at the time, whining and dining and drinking and alcohol, and drinking is very big, and we don't, we don't drink. My husband and I don't drink, so everyone's always asking, why don't you drink? Because Jesus drank wine. I'm like, actually, it doesn't really say that he drank it. And wine is actually fermented grapes, which is death. So there's no death in heaven, and it's heaven on earth. Mm -mm. Jesus didn't drink wine. Listen, wine represents the Holy Spirit. When Jesus turned water into wine, he was prophesying because he tells his mother, his mom, she's bothering him. They're running out of wine. And he goes, it's not my time yet. He doesn't even, like, it's not even addressing the fact that they're running out of wine. He's telling them, it's not my time yet, because the wine is the Holy Spirit. So when he's doing that and he does it, it's prophesying the later. Yeah. 
Do not be filled, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So the issue is never the wine. When people ask me, I'm like, oh, he's just prophesying the promise, which is even, I can't even understand that. It's funny. Wow. It's funny. Because <laughs> people think that they know. Oh, well, Jesus drank wine. I'm like, actually, like, doesn't say it. Um, yeah, there was communion, but it doesn't say or took. He said, I'll drink this again with you anew, which in heaven where there's no death, so I don't think it's wine like it is today. But anyway, you need to know the word like that. Yeah. You want to be successful at knowing who Jesus is. You want to be successful at sharing the gospel. And I tell you this because you guys aren't going to have basic Christianity. If you're my overcoming company, and you're the sons of God to be revealed in the earth, because I see that in you, you need to know the word of God like that. Last night I was telling the youth kids, we were somewhere else, you have to eat the word. Amen. You need to know the word. Amen. So that when you're sharing, you have the substance and the anointing behind you. So that God's presence drops. Because Amen. we shared that, my husband and I shared that. And they literally were like, I need to walk away. And they weren't being rude. They truly were like, I have to go because I hear what you're saying right now. And now I'm convicted. It was good. Amen? Amen. Get the word inside of you. Yes. Know your identity of who Amen. you are. So when you share, Amen. you're giving, you're feeding. Amen. You're feeding the people, right? You're eating, they're eating. Amen? Your identity. The overcomer gets a new name. Revelation 3.12. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him a new name. Your identity right now, who you see yourself in in Christ, needs to change. It needs to... Step up. Your game needs to step up. Yeah. You're an overcomer. Yes. Yeah. You're going to get a new name. Yeah. God's going to reveal you as the sons and daughters of God. When he reveals those, he's revealing light to the lost. You need to let your life pour out that identity of who you are. Some of you need to prophesy. Some of you need to start laying hands on people and praying. Some of you need to prophesy and lay hands on people and pray outside of these walls. I do it all the time. Again, I'm bored. Like, I truly am bored in life. Like, I would rather go walk up to a lost person and just, like, share the word and prophesy and pray over them. I want that. I'm hungry for that because I know I can have it in Him. Amen. God says I can have anything in Him. Do you know that? Do you know that anything you see the disciples do? Go ye into all the world. Do the same thing. Do the great commission. Jesus said, greater works. You're to do the greater works. But you can't do that if you don't know who you are in him. Yeah. You know who you are in him because you read it. Right. right? But it's not enough just to yeah. read. Read because it washes your spirit and it feeds you. But find it. Find the chunk. This is me. God, you said this is me. Yeah. I'm going to prophesy. God, you said I'm going to see things. Yeah. Father, they saw chariots of fire. Father, I want to see your angels. I want to know what you're doing in the spiritual. That's where your hunger needs to be. I'm going to have you all stand.
He really can do that. The only way you get his future, though, is to know who you are in him. You want to have testimonies like, and then I walked into the CEO's office, and I got to share, because we have, share that um, God sent me here, and we're going to be fruitful. He walked into the CEO's office and said, Jesus sent me here to the man in Silicon Valley who is an idiot. But anyway, he believes. He's got light in his life. The substance is in his life. You guys are supposed to be that. You have a future. You need to know who you are in the Lord. You need to accept what faith vision God has given you. Some of you have had one, and you don't walk in it. You kind of set it aside. And some of you don't have that faith vision. You don't have that identity, and you need to find one. And I'm going to invite you up here tonight to seek the Lord, one, for a faith vision, two, to walk in that identity. If you want prayer, if you want power from on high to ignite you, to walk in that identity, to be the overcomer, to stand as a witness in this city. Because you know what? God is going to reach the Philippines. And the thing is, is he's going to do it with or without you. I could see Melanie reaching this whole country by herself, but I think she would love some help. I know you all love Jesus, I, and I don't want you to not hear that. You guys serve. I see you serving. You serve faithfully. You serve without complaining. And you serve probably all day here today and all night last night. Some of you have seen it every single service. Amen. And thank you. Thank you. I'm not minimizing. It is good to be. I was glad when we said, let us go up the house of the Lord. It is good to be a servant in the house. And I bless you and I thank you. But I want more for you. Yeah. And you know what? Your leadership does too. Because when you know who you are in Him, this place will explode even more. Because the anointing will drip off of you. And the lost are just going to take a peek and go, what's going on with that? What's going on with Mark? What's going on with them? Why are they different? I'm a Christian, but why are they having miracle signs and wonders? Why is it when they're in a rut and they lose everything, they can just strengthen themselves in the Lord like David did and stand and then recover all? Amen? So come up here tonight. I want to pray for you. If you need a faith vision, come over here. If you want to be refreshed in the vision that God has given you, come here. And if you don't know Jesus, come over here. We'll, we'll pray with you. We'll lead you to the Lord. Amen.